so hey everyone welcome back to Rebecca's coloring arts and crafts so today I'm actually going to be starting a new thing on my channel so I've mentioned it a few times and I've kind of only gotten to it I've done a few coloring books and stuff like that first but pretty much I'm going to start with how to color your own photo from printing it to basically um, getting it on the paper so I wasn't able to do this this time because um, I don't have a printer and my friend does so pretty much what it is is um, he's basically taken into Photoshop or Lightroom particularly if the image is too dark and you need to actually tone down the depth and the shadows in the image so you need to adjust the contrast highlights I will work out how to do that and I will bring that in a future video to show you actually how to do that because that's on the computer and is sort of a different thing. Um, then basically what he's done, he's taken it to the printer. From what I know he's used Stonehenge paper um, at 245 GSM so it's nice and thick for whatever you want to do. So. When I have my own computer, I'm assuming that the Stonehenge 245 GSM paper will go through it. So it's actually not that thick, but it feels decent, really decent quality. And next thing is I'm going to actually be taking this through and testing it with different mediums. So for a start, I've done a tester on here with um, my ink tense pencils, as you'll notice. And not all of these will be light fast, obviously. So if you are planning on hanging it, I would recommend possibly using light fast pencils if it was going to be in the bright light. If they aren't quite light fast, maybe hang it somewhere where it's not so bright in the light. But basically, um, you just need to take an image of your own and print it out. And as I said, I will show in a future video just how to adjust things in that one. I work out how because I need to get my friend to show me so that I can do it myself as well with my own images and then get them printed so yeah that'll be a separate video because that's all involved with the computer and adjusting it I'm not sure how long or how short that would be so what I'm gonna do today is this is actually my friend's image not mine so I'm going to start with um, this image and pretty much we're gonna use um, our Derwent Ink Tent 72 set of pencils. So I've kind of got some of them out of here at the moment because I'm working on World of Flowers. I've still got about uh, one, two, three, four, five more colouring books to do a part on yet. So I'm working on it and I've done a part on two others. And as you know, said, I've also got some book reviews to do. So I'm going to get to those tomorrow because one needs to be posted tomorrow with those book reviews um, and I've done three colour alongs so far or for the next part. I've also started a new one on Millie Marotta's Wildlife Wonders because that was a review copy and I need to do that as part of my review but yeah it's all fun and enjoyable anyway so I love doing all of it so yeah just Give me time and I will work through things and I've still got to edit all those videos yet as well. So yeah, kind of a bit of a crazy time trying to work my own art in, videos in, book reviews in, but I will work out a way. I know I can. So we're going to continue with um, these leaves. I'm not sure if we'll get all of them done in this part, but basically we're going to be using our ink tense pencils and I've got my colours here, my greens and black and stuff to create the shadows and we're going to start with um, the bushes for this part. I'm not sure if we'll get all the bushes finished this part. We shall have to wait and see. But pretty much we're going to go through parts like this and then I'm hoping I can learn how to um, edit the photo myself to lighten it down and record that so that you can all see how to do that part and then print them out and we can go through other mediums like Prismacolor, Polychromos, Karen Diash Luminance, Derwent Studio, just 
random ones. We're just going to try a multitude of different pencils, whether they're light fast or not light fast. I just want to go through and do different ones with different mediums so that people can see that you can do it with all different types of pencils. So it's just going to be, I guess, a series of using different pencils, different types, different qualities to do the image and see how they turn out together and maybe do a bit of a comparison between the different pencils at the end, maybe not. Um, would be interesting to do but I think it would be a fun little series to do and then once we've done our different run-throughs of the different types of pencils um, then I think I might just turn it into a hand colour along photo with a different medium or which medium I'm feeling like at the time and you can then choose your own image and uh, go along with it or you can do your own image in your way either way I really hope you'll enjoy this and it will help and yeah so I guess it's time to get going so I'm kind of looking at this and it's kind of hard to tell but we're gonna have to I guess work through some of these areas and just try and do it because they're very fine little areas so I think I'm going to try and just work through depending on where the shadows are depends on the different colors I've used as you'll notice so the darker areas I've used darker colors lighter areas I've used some lighter colors so I'm going to go through and for a start, I'm going to start with my Derwent Intense Iron Green. And I'm going to go and find all these sort of darker shadow areas and do parts of them darker. We're going to have to go through with our black after too. But I'm going to find these little areas. And I forgot to get my water pencils out, my water ready, didn't I? Good one, me. But I want to try and leave some space in these spots to add our second colour, which you'll notice I'm doing a bit here because I want that second colour in. And I'll just I might zoom in closer actually so that you can see what I'm doing because it's so tiny and small that it is kind of hard to see. So I've started down in these spots and I'm trying to go into the shadows and create um, those areas to contrast to try and bring them out. I have used a bit of black in some spots and I probably will with this bit too. Um, we'll just see how it goes as we do it. Um, so I'm trying to leave some areas for some contrast but it is quite a sort of little I guess tricky spot to use so I think that spot might be a black at the back there so I'm just going to use my black and I think I might just go in with the black first and then come back to that color because it's quite hard to tell where the colors are for which in in here so I guess with finer details it's a lot harder to pick it out from a photo because there there is a lot of details there as you can tell in here there's a lot of details so it's kind of I guess looking closely at the image and judging um, where you might need black where you might need darker colors these white areas um, say over here they would need more of our lighter tones, our lighter colours. So it's kind of very much about, I guess, looking closely at the image and judging where you need a black, where you might need the darker greens, where you might need the, the lighter greens. And it's trying to work those into those areas because they are very fine, very detailed areas in photos. So I reckon it's probably even more, oops, that was wood. Oops, that wasn't meant to have black there. Oh, well, I guess it does now. Well, it was kind of shadows in the wood, so we'll do that just there. We might even do a bit of the wood. If we feel like a change from grass, 
because there's going to be quite a lot of grass and but even if we don't this time yeah, I would have put black here anyway because as you'll notice it's also very dark so I recommend for these um, spots that are quite dark if you can't lighten the image off quite so much I would recommend um, using a black or something along those lines to fill in that spot you can always add browns or other colours into there I'm leaving some spots where we can put a bit of a brown in there but uh, pretty much if it's too dark I would just recommend completely covering it with uh, a darker pencil shall we say so there's some areas like this in the grass that I'm going to add the black into but it's a very sort of fine and tricky details so depending we may not even get to the water this time I'm not sure but there may be some areas too where you just have to go over the grass grass um, layers and just take out some of those layers because it is so fine and detailed and sometimes as you've seen in my videos it is hard to get specific details out of fine areas and sometimes you have to cover those areas to make it work so yeah just use your judgment as to if you're doing fine details and trying to fill in those details as to if you want to cover over details or fill them in or however it works best for you because I sometimes find as you've noticed you just can't keep the keep from covering those fine details because they are so detailed and it's difficult to differentiate them sometimes particularly when there's a lot of a lot of detail like you'll see here and you are going to need a very fine brush for doing fine details like this too in a photo and you'll see there I accidentally went over a bit of the grass area as well but it's kind of what you can do I guess so I'm just going to fill in some of those spots because they are darker spots I know I'm sort of accidentally covered some details up that maybe I might have wanted but there are so many fine grass strands in here that it probably doesn't matter too much if you cover some of those up just as long as it doesn't look kind of odd at the end I guess but we can only do what we can do and I think this area here is a bit of a that, that spot there is a bit of a branch but these spots are grass that I'm working on in now and I'm just filling in like yes there's some fine grass details in there but I'm just filling some of those in because it's awkward to shall we say fit them all you know work around some of those details so I just want to adjust the image a bit to suit me and it may even be easier with pencils I don't know but I, I just want to try different mediums and see how it works out together whether it works out so we're back uh, camera battery died without me even realizing it it pretty much all I was doing was working on the little black spots for uh, the grass pretty much so I'm just finishing off the last few spots with our ink black creating some of those deeper shadow areas and I don't think the wood goes, well the wood might go part up there so oh, I don't know if it does 
Could be another log resting from behind the, the grass. But it kind of looks like there's, looks like it's grass there, so I'm just gonna treat it as grass. But yeah, pretty much I've just been adding in our black details, as you'll see here. Um, now what I want to do is come back to our Derwent Ink Tents Iron Green, and we want to start bringing in some of that where these deeper shades where the black isn't, but leaving space for our second colour as well in those spaces. So we might actually do this as an alternating thing. So we're actually going to do our iron green and a beach green and we're going to alternate between them so that we don't get lost as to which parts have been done, which parts haven't been done. I think I will. So that way I can know for sure if they've been done or not and we'll probably bring in the water after doing this bit. I think actually I'm just going to stop and go and grab my water now and I'm going to quickly find the paint brush. Where is it? I've got a really fine one here that I haven't actually used yet that I bought for this purpose and yeah I'm just quickly going to stop and get the water because we might even just go over and fill in our black water areas now and I will be back in a so we're back everyone, so what we're going to do, we're going to use a double zero Micador paintbrush, as you'll notice it's very very fine, and then just some water, and it, as usual we're just dipping it in and then wiping the majority of the water off. Then what we want to do is we want to actually, I'm going to just fill in these green areas as well, but we just want to bring it over these areas, I think I need a, just a little more water. Sometimes the first time you use a brush it takes a while to soak it up and we just want to bring that water into those green areas and we're also going to bring it over the blacks just to start filling that in a bit so that I don't sort of get messed up as to what's where, what's what. Because I just realised that's probably going to happen if I don't fill these things in. So I'm just going to use these darker greens and then I'm going to change to, as you know, so I've used two or three different greens alternated there. So once we've um, done this, we'll alternate into those other greens. So now we're just coming in and we're basically wetting down our black to set it permanently on the image. We are and we're creating those shadows so we don't get quite so confused. But this is why I said you're going to need a very fine brush because as you'll notice, it's extremely fine details that we're working with. Um, I guess if you have trouble with viewing things short-sighted, you may want a magnifying glass or something to look through whilst doing this bit, I guess. And if you're unsure if you've been over a certain black area or anything, just go over it again. It doesn't necessarily hurt because it's not going to rub off once we re wet being ink tense. So you notice I'm probably going over multiple areas the same time, same areas that I've already been over because I'm unsure as to if I've been over them or not. And I'm just going to fill in this each little section at a time. So I'm going to fill in this section of the wheel, then this, then that, or the other way around, whichever works. But just so that I don't 
lose my place pretty much. You may notice the ink tents colour start to stay in the tip of your pencil, tip of your brush as well. So I've had that happen a lot with these. I'm starting to get a bit of a black stain on this brush and I haven't even used it much. Well, I haven't used it at all to be honest. I'll just bring that up there just to... I'm just going to use a little bit of the, the black off the brush tip and bring that up into here because I accidentally smudged it up into there. So I'm just going to fill that in and fix that up that way. And you're probably going to have to do this between each layer with the, the Inktense pencils because otherwise it could get very confusing if you're working on very fine details. It could. So now I think I've done finished that bottom area so I'm going into our top area to do our black up there. I'm just going to use a little bit, just when you need to use a little bit, um, just by touching the tip of your brush and just use it to fill in areas when you need to because sometimes it might smudge a bit and you want to cover that spot up or, or you might just get a hand cramp and it might cause you to have to cover something up. Either way I just find if I smudge it a bit then with the water because my hand just cramps a bit or something then I go and just cover it up by dabbing the brush the damp brush on the pencil and that gets the the pencil color onto the brush and it just allows you to cover things up and do a good cover up when you're using the intense I find Okay, and now I've got the bottom section to go. So down here. So this is why I was saying you need a very fine brush, just particularly for fine details. If you have less fine details, you could probably use a thicker brush, I would say. 
but just because I'm only starting to do this too um, and sure as I go through um, I'll work out how, how you can do things what size brushes and all of that sort of thing but I've only got two brush sizes anyway so got my number two and this double zero paintbrush so yeah use what you have I guess so other people may work out more the paintbrush sizes that they can use for different things more than me because I've only got a certain types of paintbrushes that aren't very big or anything and it's working with a fairly lightly damp brush and working quickly as well or well, trying to work as quickly as you can anyway I think I might have left a little much water on this one, but being a heavier paint or not a colouring book probably doesn't matter quite as much, but it will take longer if you want to put another colour over it at all. It will. So yeah. So now we're going to come back to a combo mix of iron green and beach green. And we're just going to do the darker areas. We're not going to worry about outside this wagon wheel yet. We're just going to do these little bits in these three sections first. And we'll work towards the other spots. Like there's more grass up through here and heaps over here. But first we're just going to focus on at least doing this little spot behind the, the wheel. Or the water wheel or whichever it is. So we're going to... Do, that's wood there so you want to try and put out iron green and beach green where these darker spots are so yeah and just alternate between them as you need them Although you're probably doing your own image, so you probably won't have this exact image anyway. But. Yeah. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe my friend will let me put it up for other people to colour along with this. I don't know. I guess we'll see. And I'm also just, I'm doing this in streaks so that you can kind of see the grass it may not look totally that way but I'm trying to do it in streaks So 
I'm just doing the darkest areas with these. And it may take a while to go through and do this. We may not get a whole, it may not look like a whole heap, but it's just gonna be a very slow process doing these photos, hand coloring, hand coloring photos, because photos do tend to have a lot more detail than just a regular drawing. able to totally get all these colors in to exactly the same spot I'm noticing to blend them together but I'm trying to do the best I can and if I can't quite get them into that spot I'm just trying to um, basically put them one above the other so it sort of almost looks like the colors changing with the plants There's some spots like these where we can change the colours. But there's some spots where there's grass supposedly running through it, but I can't quite keep it to that, so I'm just sort of covering some of those spots is I need to as well and I'm trying to leave spaces even if they're dark and next to it so that we can add in a bit of different tones and create some more dimension in there too So I'm just going to use the water. I think I'm just going to focus on this small section here for this part that I was just doing and we'll work on other parts with other times just because I think it's going to take quite a while and we're already a bit of the way in. So we're coming back in with our double O on my Cadour brush and we want to try and keep those, shall we say, streaks um, going with the grass. And we also want to try and keep the different colours together or separate if we can without blending them too much. So just because there's so much fine detail here, I was thinking based on the time, I'm just going to have to cut it down to a smaller section rather than using a larger section right now. As much as I want to do a larger section, not going to fit with the time right now. It's not, unfortunately. And 
and the colors of the ink tents will actually change as you add water. They will. So I'm trying not to miss anywhere but it's kind of hard to see where the green is when it's right next to the black so just do your best just like I am <laughs> And even if you're running over the black, it shouldn't matter too much if the black's already been dried because it was um, the colour we put on before and that's why I thought maybe I should put water on before I do the next colour because then it's not going to bleed one colour into the next when I do each different layer of grass. So there's that layer. So now what we want to do is bring in our beach green and a vivid green with the mix. So we're going to do that and then we'll add in uh, our lightest tones. Hopefully we'll fill the thing up with that. So we're going to do a mix of the beach green and our vivid green so hopefully we can see the difference as we go that probably was a lighter spot but yeah it is what it is beach green and vivid green trying not to go over the other leaves if we can avoid it but the grass but it's so detailed it's kind of hard not to and I'm just going over leaves when I have to because I can't work out exactly where the the connection is or it's easier to bring it over those spots sometimes. And for the green. Each green, with a green. And you may just have to go over the same spots multiple times or even if you're not sure where you've previously put the greens on, you may just have to Go over these spots again. You may. Be 
peach green. Anyway, I'm just gonna pause for a minute and I'll be back once um, we're done, just because it's getting closer to the end of this section of recording. So I'll be back shortly. So, hey everyone, we're back. So, we're just gonna keep going here with our beach green and our vivid green. Um, we're gonna keep adding in some of the grass areas here and then I'm hoping to add some of our lighter areas. I'm hoping it'll look half decent because. I haven't really done much of this before, this is kind of my first proper test, seeing how it all turn out and look. So <laughs> fingers crossed it all work out. Fingers crossed. But yeah, it should be should be interesting to see how it comes out. And I'm hoping it'll all work out nicely and well, and you'll be like, yay! No, like, bum, bum, bum. So I'm hoping you'll be able to see the different strands. Hoping. Let's see if that happens or not. Well, that could be another matter. I use three colours for the final bit just because of the fact that it's kind of, shall we say, um, some of these strands are a little long basically. Now we're going to come in with our double O micador brush and a bit of water and we're just going to fill in these little areas that we've just put our green on. If we go over some of the other green areas it doesn't matter. Um, they're probably already set and waterproof anyway unless you miss them in the past in which case not a bad thing if you go over them again. And so yeah, we're going to bring these colours in and I'm hoping that it will look okay. Hoping, hoping, hoping because some spots you notice I put the, the beach green in the centre instead. I probably should have had some other uh, lighter spots shall we say. like added a third colour instead of that but I kind of wanted to do it with just the two colours and then try and get more dimension with the next layer as well so we'll see it should hopefully all work out we'll see soon enough I guess once we see this grass area I guess we will
a relief and that I didn't realise it was in the light till just then. But this is basically like my first test playing around with hand colouring photos so I'm hoping it'll work out but I guess it'll be an interesting test to see how it looks at the end and just how it works with the fine details, with less fine details, all of those sorts of things. It will, it'll be interesting to see how it all turns out. Okay, so that's our water. I'm just trying to see what the, it's hard to see from down there what the time is because I'm short sighted, not long sighted. So, seven minutes into this lot. So, I want to start this again, and I think I'm going to do this with our beach green, vivid green, and apple green. So, I'm going to sort of try to choose where to do the shadows, but I can't say I will get it right. Hopefully I will, but I can't say I will exactly get things perfect by any means. And there's some areas where we've got some part green on it already that I'll just add on to and do it that way. pretty much alternating it through beach green, vivid green, apple green and where it gets brighter I'll probably have more of the apple green in it than the beach green I think
work out looking at it as it is now at least I'm hoping it will So it might have been the wrong colour there, but oh well. I thought I had the vivid green there, but I didn't. I guess you get what you get. I can't see all the streaks so much in there I'm feeling in here but I guess it still kind of looks like a plant and that's what we want and I guess it's art so it'll look a little different as we do it to a photo when you see all the accurate colors all over it so I guess it'll be interesting to see exactly how it comes out Well,
Okay, so now we're gonna color it. It's kind of looking interesting, but very different from how I imagined it would look. It doesn't look nearly so like the photo as I thought it would. So I'm just gonna pause for a minute though because of the camera time, and then I will be back and we shall wet this down. See how that comes out? And then I think I'll leave it at that for this part. But it's kind of, I think it looks interesting. So, yeah, it looks quite different to that. It does, but I like it at the same time. So, yeah. I'll just pause it here for a minute and then I'll... So, hey everyone, we're back. So, we're going to basically finish off this little section and I think I'll leave it there for now. Yeah, there's green stains on the tip of this brush. We covered over the black, but yeah, what can you do? So we're just gonna go and finish all these little areas off and try and water the meal all in, I guess you could say. Because I want to do this, then get dinner. Then if I can, I want to um, go and do some more colouring book recordings or something along those lines. I do. I would like to. We shall see how it goes, of course, with time and everything else. But yeah. At least that's what I'm hoping to do. Because I'm loving getting back to all this stuff. And as I said too in the past, I will show how to adjust the photos and all of that in a separate video. I will. Yeah, I've got some parts I want to do for this world of flowers, magical jungle. I still want to do another part of uh, Mythomorphia, Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson, and Millie Morris's Animal Kingdom with our pro color fishy. So, yeah, we're going to be getting on to those after dinner if we've got time, hopefully, otherwise, I'll be getting into it tomorrow but I've got um, something on in the morning so I gotta do that and then yeah I'll get to videos later that day but I might just try doing some more tonight see how I feel after dinner anyway <laughs> sometimes it's like you feel like doing something before you do dinner and then after dinner it's like too tired now it is. At least that's me anyway. So we're just putting water over all of the last little bit. And some of that black's coming out again as we rub it over those other things, which is great. And you can still see the grassy bits there, so awesome.
trying not to use too much water but it's sometimes sometimes you misjudge particularly when your hand gets wet I think I've said that in the past But I'm finding with this 245 GSM paper having it really damp like I usually do doesn't seem to work out quite as quite as well because it seems to need a little bit more like it's still setting and everything but it seems almost like it is needing just a little more on this paper it may not be but Maybe I'm just imagining it, but it almost seems like I need a little more water on this paper than I usually use for things. It is because some of it looks like it hasn't really had the water go down at all, but I guess I kind of want it looking a bit grassy still anyway, so... We do. because that was the effect, that's why I didn't do any blending and just did strokes with the grass as well. And it seems to be working well that way, so it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. But you can kind of tell though it has blended them even um, even with the lighter colour tone it's maybe it's just that I'm not realizing it's doing it because it's soaking in so fast to the the paper because it is a quite a thick artist paper which is highly possible because it doesn't even look like it's wet so it now that I think about it, it could just be that the paper's just soaking it up so fast that I'm not even noticing if it's wet or not because they do look blended, so it's obviously working. It obviously is. Okay, so there we go. There we have it. Um, that's our finished part of our little wheel I will continue it more um, later just um, right now I think I'm gonna leave it there and get dinner and try and get another recording done so I really hope you've enjoyed this if you have please leave a like subscribe and comment and there will be more parts later as well as a tutorial on how to adjust the image on the computer to make it lighter for coloring 
So yeah, I will see you next time. Bye.